Yo, what's happening, man? It's Jay Hamilton back again. And this time I had a user hit me up about some questions with the MPC software. Really, it's primarily about the software itself. I'm not really going to talk about the controller, the Renaissance, or the MPC Live or the MPC X. This is primarily dealing with the MPC software 2.0. Right now, I'm inside the software. I got a couple of questions from a user. He was trying to figure out how to use it, basically. And he wanted to know about how can I access the BPM detect inside of the software without even going to a controller. So say if you got the Renaissance, you may not be able to see that uh, BPM detect on your screen. I'm not sure. You may be able to. I, I don't have my Renaissance hooked up right now. But I'm going to show you how to get to it with the software. If you're using a different type of Akai controller or keyboard that uses the MPC software, then this will help you as far as navigating to certain features. So I want to show you how I get to beep detect, BPM detect, basically. So what you want to do is say the key to BP, BPM detect is really it helps you to find the BPM of a sample. So say you got a loop loaded up. So... What you want to do, you want to go to sample edit. So this is sample edit right here. I have it loaded up with these icons. I mean, it's going to be, you can change this to something else if you want. You can have the words instead to say what it is, but these symbols basically will tell you what the features are. I, I didn't bother to switch it, but uh, bear with me. So you can also get to these with command keys. So but I'm going to show you with these icons. So this right here, if you hover your mouse over it, it may tell you what it is. This is sample edit right here. So I'm inside a sample edit right now. So you want to be able to get to the BPM feature. So the key to BPM or detect BPM, you have to be in the trim section of the sample edit. Not in chop, but actually the trim because that's basically... It expects you to have a full loop or whatever long wave file before you chop it. So that's the only way it's going to figure out what the BPM is. So you got to make sure that you're right here on trim. And then if you go over to your right, you're going to see detect BPM. And it's going to pop up this. So this is the BPM it detects. This, they think the sample's at this BPM. So, okay, what you want to do is it's going to pop up B, uh, detect BPM. But from here, what you want to do is click detect. And usually, if it doesn't have a BPM listed here, you want to hit detect so it can see what it is. But it already knows basically what it is at this moment. But if you want to detect it, just hit detect, and it should tell you what it is in this box. And uh, that's basically how you would know what it is. And after that, that'll give you an idea. You can close it. And... It's the easy. It's it's that easy. It's other ways you can figure out BPMs to samples and loops. Um, sometimes I use time stretch. I may go into time stretch if I can. Um, usually, what I do is uh, whatever the BPM. I don't know what the BPM is. You know, you know. It's usually easier to do it on shorter loops, but you know, sometimes it'll tell you what the BPM is here. You know. This is close. Uh, it's, it's a lot of beats in this because this is a long sample. But say if it was a shorter, like, eight-bar loop, four-bar loop, you could get the tempo like that, too. So that's another way I do it. But you don't want to time stretch it. You just want to get the BPM that way. So, so that's one way of doing it. Also, this user asked me a question about chopping. Okay. I'm trying to understand what he meant, and I'm hopefully I get it right. But basically... He was saying that in CHOP, it was something about his slice, how to go back to normal. I think he was talking about the ad slices. So I'm going to just go through this. I'm hoping I'm getting it right. So bear with me. Um, hopefully this user, hopefully I'm answering this user's question. So let's go here. So let's add a slice. So I'm, all, I'm, all, I'm doing this all in the software. So let's go. I'm going to use my mouse. <laughs> So 
what I did was I used the lazy chop feature. I didn't go, I didn't do the regions or anything like that. I just did lazy chop because I think he was asking me a question about the manual slices. So this is how you do it. So he said he wants to go back to normal. So what I'm thinking is he maybe wants to erase the slices. So let's see if that's what it is. So you have you have options. You you can either do a slice at a time. So say if you're right here, you can get rid of that slice. Bam, go back. Go back that way. You just get rid of these slices. Or you get rid of all of them. If you select all right here, they all go away. There you go. Um, well, hopefully that answered his question as far as that's concerned. Now, he had another question about folders and things like that and how to have, make folders your favorites. Now, that's one thing I'm not sure I know how to do myself inside of the software. Now, if you look over here to your right, the file browser here, um, you see the folders here. So usually... These first two, this is where everything, where the MPC software, like I save all my folders where the MPC wants it to be at. So I just make all my folders and files and put them where the MPC wants them. And that's usually on one and two. But from three and four, you go here, you can select, you can get to whatever you want to get to on your computer. Um, so, you know, I'm not sure how you would be able to make that your favorites is that's one thing I don't know per se. I just don't know how to do that. And maybe someone out there knows something about that. Maybe they can chime in. But the one thing I would like to talk about maybe is these are filters here. I don't know if he meant that. Um, you know, these are just program sample stuff like that. So I really don't see anything about doing favorites in the browser. If anybody knows anything about that, feel free to hit me up because I'm curious to, to know if it's a way to do it because I don't know how to do it. So sorry about that, man. Um, only one way I do know how to do it is say you want to. So let's get out of here. So like I have it right now, track three. And over here is a plug in. So. OK. So yeah, I have, it's set to hybrid, but if you want to, I, it's a way you can actually make plugins your favorite. So if you select this, and it's gonna bring up this window. If you look to your right, you see favorite, you can click these tabs on the plugins you think is your favorite, you know, whatever those plugins are. You can just make them your favorites and bam. And they'll, they'll be your favorite. So I don't know if that's what he meant. Um, hopefully that helps. Uh, but anyway, this is a short video. I just wanted to share those things for this user, and maybe it's going to help you out there.